Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at an integral test and a P-series test to determine whether or not a series converges or diverges. And so we've got a statement here that if f is positive, so we've got to have a positive function above the x-axis, no negative values, continuous, that's pretty standard, and decreasing, so your terms have to be getting smaller, then for this sequence, you can replace it with f of n and, and call it the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x. And you can just call all of your n's x's and then do the integral from 1 to infinity. Now, if your integral converges, then so does your series. If your integral diverges, so does your series. This statement says that the integral and the series do the same thing. So let's take a look at this first example here. Of course, the first thing we want to find out is the limit as n approaches infinity. We're going to do the nth term test on everything. And of course, the limit as n approaches infinity, since this is bottom heavy, this does equal zero. So we cannot say anything using the nth term test. This is one of those that we now have to figure out what, what else can we do. Well, we do have some positive, everything is positive here at, from 1 to infinity. This is going to be getting smaller. The denominator is getting a lot larger than the top. We just showed that here. We're approaching zero. So we're going to try the integral from 1 to infinity of, we're going to replace those n's with x's of x over x squared plus 1. And if this thing converges, we say the series converges. If the integral diverges, we say the series diverges. Now, it's very important that they're both going to do the same thing. But if the integral converges to a number, that does not mean the series converges to a number. It just means they're, they both do the same thing. That's something that some kids get confused about, and understandably so. But when we're doing the series, we are plugging in endpoints, basically. We're plugging in 1, plugging in 2, plugging in 3. This is actually a Riemann sum for this integral. And a Riemann sum is not exactly equal to the value of the integral. I just want to warn you about that. Now, if you remember from improper integrals, this integral is improper because I've got infinity as one of my endpoints. So I have to do the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x over x squared plus 1. That's how we approach that. So now I have to figure out, can I do this integral? Well, it's a fraction. So the first thing I want to know is, is it u prime over u? And it's close. All I'm going to do is put a 2 up here and then divide by 2 out here. You can pull the 1 half all the way out in front of the limit. And so I have 1 half the limit as b approaches infinity. Now I have u prime over u, so my answer for that antiderivative is the natural log of the absolute value of the bottom. I don't need to put absolute value on x squared plus 1 because we all know that if you square something and then add 1, it's going to be positive. And I'm going to go from 1 to b. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to plug in our top limit, our upper limit. So that's going to give me the natural log of b squared plus 1. And then we subtract plugging in the lower limit, which will give me the natural log of 2. Now I have to figure out, does this grow to infinity? Does it, does it converge to a finite number? Well, let's plug in infinity for b. I'm going to get 1 half the natural log of infinity squared plus 1. That's a rather large number. And natural log is an increasing graph, strictly monotonic. It increases forever. So that we have basically the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of 2, which is going to be 1 half of infinity, which is divergent. So that means that we have an infinite area under the curve, so the sum of this Riemann sum is also going to, going to grow to infinity. Since the integral diverged, I hope I didn't say converge over here at all, but because it does diverge. Since the integral diverged, so does the series. That's what this statement up here says. They both do the same thing. So the integral is divergent. The series is divergent. Let's take a look at a second example. I have um, positive values. Um, the first thing we're going to do for this series is check the limit as, 
um, n approaches infinity of a sub n. We're going to do the nth term test. But of course, since it's bot bottom heavy, as n approaches infinity, 1 over n squared plus 1 goes to 0. So I can't say divergent by the nth term test. What I'm going to do here is check with the integral test. I'm going to, this is positive, continuous, and decreasing. I've just showed that. So I'm going to check the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x squared plus 1. And we're going to see if we can figure out the antiderivative from 1 over x squared plus 1, and then we'll plug in our b and our 1, and we'll see what happens. So does anyone remember the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1? It's actually one that we've seen before. I'll give you a second to think about that. Of course, you could just pause me. You might have already paused me. I don't know. Anyway, so the limit as b approaches infinity, and has anyone thought about that antiderivative? It is the arctan of x. That's an arctan antiderivative. And we're going to go from 1 to b. So the first thing we do is we plug in our b. So I've got the limit as b approaches infinity of the arctan of b minus the arctan of 1. We're going to let b go to infinity, and so I have to actually answer, what is the arctan of infinity minus the arctan of 1? Now, from the nth term test video and from pre-cal, you should know the graph of arctan has a horizontal asymptote out here at infinity of pi over 2. So if you go down this x-axis as far as you'd like to go, the limit as we approach infinity of arctan is pi over 2. And you should know the arctan of 1, the angle whose tangent is 1, 1 opposite over adjacent square root of 2. You know what that angle is right there? Yes, that's a 45 degree angle, which we're going to call that just pi over 4. This is a convergent number. It's 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, so it's 1 pi over 4. We did not grow to infinity. There is a definite limit to the area under the curve. It never gets above pi over 4. Since the integral converges, so does the series. The series converges because the integral did. And just like I said before, this does not mean the series converges to pi over 4. It just means that it's going to converge to a number. All right, now the integral test remainder gives us a way of figuring out an error. And so if we're ever going to stop a series at a finite number of terms, we've got to give an error statement. No approximation is ever worth anything without an error statement. This says that if you use a certain number of terms, then you can figure out the error by doing the integral from the number of terms you stopped at to infinity of the function. So I'm going to show you how this looks. We're actually going to approximate a series by using just a few terms, and then we're going to come up with an estimate of the maximum error for our approximation. So I'm going to write up here what our approximation is. For 1 over n to the 4th, our approximation is 1 over 1 to the 4th plus 1 over 2 to the 4th plus 1 over 3 to the 4th. And I didn't know until today or didn't remind me today. I know 1 to the 4th is 1, 2 to the 4th is 16, and 3 to the 4th is 243, but I don't know 4 to the 4th. So that's something that maybe I need to go start memorizing. I definitely don't know 5 to the 4th, and I do not know 6 to the 4th. So I'm writing them like this. That's my approximation. By the way, this equals about 1.07289. Did that in my head just now. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is my approximation for the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 4th. Now I know that this is not right because why is this not right? Because I left off 1 over 7 to the 4th, 1 over 8 to the 4th. I left off a bunch of terms, did I not? So I know that this actually is less than the value of the series. But we can now include an estimate for the maximum error for our approximation. What we just learned was that if we do the integral from the number of terms we stopped at out to infinity of 1 over n to the 4th, our error is going to be less than or equal to that value. So we'll at least have a boundary for how close we are to the actual answer. So that's going to equal, um, well, I, I can do this, the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 6 to b 
and by the way, this should be an x here, and there should be a dx in here. I apologize. 6 to the b of, I'm going to write it as x to the negative 4 dx. And I'm going to see if I can figure this out. So that's going to be the limit as b approaches infinity of, now if you, when we integrate x, you know, we have u to the n du. This dx here is very important. It's the derivative of x. So all I have to do is add 1 to the exponent and divide by that. So that gives me negative 1 over 3x cubed. The 3 came from the fact that I added 1 to negative 4 to get negative 3. And dividing by negative 3, I just put the negative on the top there. And we're going to go from 6 up to b. So this is going to equal the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 over 3b cubed minus, since it's negative 1, I'll do a plus over 3 times 6 cubed. So let's see what happens as b approaches infinity to this first fraction. As b approaches infinity, I get infinity cubed times 3, and it's in the denominator. This fraction approaches 0. Now, there's no b in this next part, so that is just the answer to my integral. That is 1 over 3 times 6 cubed, which happens to be, from my head, right, you know, or from the calculator, it's about 0 0.0015. So that is my error. We know that, I'm, that this value is too small, but if we add 0 0.0015 to that, we will bound the actual value of the series. So this gives me that this tells me the first six terms gets me pretty close to the actual answer, which I don't know what the actual answer is, but I do know if I add point zero zero one five to this, I'll have an, an answer in between there. So anyway, um, I guess I could write that down. I know that one point zero seven two eight nine is less than the series, but I also know that that is less than. 1.07289 plus 0.0015. So if you add that to that, you'll have you'll at least know where that series. You'll have a lower bound and an upper bound for what the the sum of the series actually is. All right, so let's take a look at the last thing. This is a p series, and anytime we have a series that's one over n to a power, and that power's got to be a positive constant, we're going to call it a p series. If p equals one, we have one over n to the first, and I have right now some students investigating this. This is called the harmonic series. It's got a special name. It has a connection to where the harmonics lie on a string. So anyway, if you see anything that looks like that, we have a fairly quick test to see, and this is going to be nice, we need quick, this is going to be a quick test to see whether it converges or diverges. So if you have a series that's 1 over n to any power, keep in mind that power must be a positive number, a positive constant, then here are your rules. This will diverge if 0 is less than p is less than or equal to 1. So if it's like 1 tenth or 1 half or 1 third or 1 fourth or even 0 0.9, if this power on your n is any number between 0 all the way even up to 1, which, and what is that called if, if it is 1? It's 1 over just n, right? The harmonic series. We now know the harmonic series diverges. Now, for the students I have working on this, I don't know if you believe this or not, but that will eventually grow to infinity. Right now, I think we did the first, I don't remember what, how many we did, 160 million terms, and it only added to like 19.5, uh, but it would get, it's gonna get bigger than that. It's eventually gonna get above 20, and this, this test tells us that. That series diverges. Now, it will converge, it converges if p is greater than one, so like one over n squared, one over n cubed, one over n to the 1.1 will converge. It's got to be greater than one. And the uh, third statement here, we know that the p-series test has a, uh, has a funny name. So what are we going to do? Hey, we're going to apply the p-test. Anyway, um, all right, so let's take a look at an example and we'll be done. I can uh, simplify this, n to the first times n to the one-half. You're going to add those exponents, and you're going to get 1 over n to the 3 halves. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. 
this is a P series. This is a P series with P equal to three halves. I happen to know that three halves is larger than one. According to this rule, then this series is going to converge. All right, so we're going to see some more in the next coming days about what to do with different kinds of series, but that's the integral test and the P-series test, and I will see you guys tomorrow.